What's up guys, welcome back to another gameplay video. Uh, today we're gonna be jumping into that mono white deck one more time again. Don't think it's great, but we're gonna give it a shot. Uh, we did get one game out of the three yesterday, uh, so we're gonna hopefully get that at least again. Hopefully we can get more. Uh, one thing I wanna mention before we jump into this video, uh, we did reprint the stickers. So if you follow us on Instagram, uh, you probably know, or at least saw, that we printed some stickers that were like huge 5-inch stickers. Unfortunately, we got the wrong size, uh, and so we did get a reorder, uh, and so we got some smaller ones. So, what we're going to be doing with these is anybody uh, of from for this month on Patreon uh, that signs up, it can be any tier, it doesn't matter, uh, they will be getting a free just little sticker. It's nothing crazy, it's nothing super exciting, but... It is something that, you know, we want to promote things and do nice things for the Patreon people. And so that's just a little bit of a, not incentive necessarily, but just kind of a little bit of a promotional item that we're going to send out to you guys. I think every once in a while we're going to try and do that. Uh, I don't know that it's always going to be like a sticker. It may be something else. Uh, but I just wanted to get, get a bug in your ear for that. If you're interested in picking up a sticker, that is one way to do it. We'll probably have some left over because we did get a fairly large order, so... We may find a new way to get those out to you guys at some point soon, but uh, they're, you know, they're just nice little stickers with our logo on them. So if you would like to pick one up, uh, again, any tier on Patreon will uh, will be able to get that. So uh, just adds up there. We also uh, made these little mugs uh, for Will and I that I'm really excited about. So uh, I'll be drinking my coffee out of that. So uh, let's go ahead and jump in here. Uh, if you missed the first video uh, with this mono white deck, uh, that would be where you could see the full deck tech. The list is, uh, or the deck list is linked in the description. Uh, it's an interesting one. It's very life gainy, uh, which is very standard white, um, and it's fine. I just don't think it's great. <clears throat> uh, this is definitely a keep, though. Uh, we've got an easy one, two, three, depending on what the opponent does, obviously. And then we'll, of course, get some card draw. This obviously gives us some long-term uh, leverage in creatures. The The problem that we found with this deck, and we did find this out uh, yesterday uh, very, very quickly, uh, is that this deck does very well in the early game, usually, uh, unless they just one-for-one one a lot of stuff. But, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't do very well long-term. It doesn't have a great way to close out the game. I've got a few things. Uh, a Johnny's a good one uh, to kind of blow up the board, depending on our life situation. Um, but like against these kinds of decks, this mono red style deck, it's very, very easy to, uh, to kind of lose out on a lot of stuff. Uh, here I'm going to play the pride mate, I think. That may be incorrect. Okay, sure. Uh, we'll play castle, play Daxos, we'll play life's bounty. Uh, definitely play these in the wrong order, by the way. I was trying to not let Daxos die to a burn spell, so I wanted to get something out first, uh, which is why I did that, just to kind of evaluate. <clears throat> All right. Well, that's the problem card for sure. So... Huh. <clears throat> I think honestly what we take though is the uh, Calamity. That card is just way, way too good. So let's get rid of that. Um, we'll swing him with the Pride Mate. Uh, the one thing I will say, if we had Banishing Light, it put Banishing Light on the Spitfire itself, we could have swung in with this, gained a life and pumped this up. I think long-term, though, uh, the worry is much more on the Calamity. And they have a second one. Makes sense. Yep. And this is where... This is how this deck just goes, like, way, way over the top. Um, thankfully, we do have life game, but I don't know that it'll be enough to race this. We'll certainly try. Drawing lands like this does not help. Uh, let's go ahead and do this now. <clears throat> go ahead and get that. We'll swing in with everything. Gain another life. There we go. Um, so the hope here is just that they don't go over the top with a bunch of stuff. 
we do have backup Daxos as well, which is kind of nice. If they have a way to deal with a Pride Mate, that's a bit of a problem. Chandra. Well, we're going to be taking a lot of damage here then. Each one triggers this, which triggers all of this. That's the, that's the problem with this deck. Uh, we will block that. Gain a life. Uh, they've got two mana open. I mean, I think we just have to go for it, right? Okay. Um, I was a little worried about a burn spell there. Obviously, they didn't have it, which is great. Uh, so we did get round one. That's kind of nice. Um, I did have fun that match. I did. Uh, again, though, this deck, uh, that was a bit of a close game. Closer than it maybe looked, uh, solely because that that red deck goes way, way over the top with that uh, Calamity. And the Spitfire Phoenixes, or whatever they're called. <clears throat> Um, if you have a deck suggestion, by the way, I'm actually looking for some new decks to play. Uh, we need a land, but if we get a land, this deck is, or this hand is sweet. Um, kind of looking for something new to play with. So, uh, one idea that I do have right now, uh, and it's a deck that I've just seen a good bit of, is the, uh, black-red discard, like, graveyard interaction with Croxa. Uh, so it runs the little, like, 2-1 death toucher that puts stuff in the graveyard. It runs the, um the zombie saga enchantment and things like that all to pitch stuff to the graveyard and then hopefully get um get some croxes out really really quick which is sweet uh let's go ahead and do this do this and swing in that gets this at least out of uh out of range of shock or bone crusher giant which is nice and we did get our land which is good uh, not gonna block here. Very easily could have a shock, so I don't think it's worth it. Yep. Yep, very glad I didn't. Uh, I'm willing to bet they had had a bone crusher giant or something along those lines. Ah, they did have the shock. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, let's actually go Linden here. Uh, gonna gain us a life, gonna pump this up. <clears throat> uh, to get at the, the goal of this, by the way, if they do play Bone Crusher Giant here, we can still swing in with this and it will get rid of that. Not gonna block here again. Uh, we know they have Bone Crusher Giant, so not worth it. Uh, if they want to spend multiple spells to get rid of something, they can. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's do this and Healer's Hawk. Gain some more life and then just keep the keep the damage train going. They do not have a whole lot of threats, which does help with the Ember Cleave worry. Uh, that's certainly kind of the biggest thing that they can finish us with. We're gaining a good bit of life here, though, so... Um, I mean, we're still at 20, and they're they're going down pretty significantly here. Uh, I think just a bad draw on their end. They have very clearly had, like, Shocks and Bone Crusher Giants this whole time, so just playing around it as best we can is uh, keeping us in this game. Don't know if we'll win it, but that definitely helps us. <laughs> Excuse me. I was going to say, they should definitely not attack here. Um, we'll do this. Cool. We won it. Uh, we are 2-0 and right now, so actually not a bad showing so far. Uh, we will go through one more game, see if it works, uh, get that 3-0. I don't know if we will. Uh, again, just don't have high hopes for this deck. I do like it. I, I, I've talked about it in the first video. Uh, mono white is like so white in general is like my least favorite color uh just out of the five i feel like it's the the most like kind of boring in general uh and and that's very like classical just like it's all about little dudes pumping each other up that kind of thing i don't love it but 
this is an interesting hand, a bit slow. I don't know if it's going to be good or not. Uh, I'd like to try it, though. Um, that being said, I've always had a bit of an affinity for the, like, mono-white life gain style decks. Don't know why, but it just feels really, really good to gain a ton of life. This one is not so focused on that. Certainly, it does have a lot of life gain aspects, and it still has, like, the pride mates and things like that. But its goal isn't to just, like, gain infinite life, uh, as, as great as that would be. Uh, it's definitely not that. Uh, and so it's interesting because this is kind of a middle ground deck where it is very just like creature bash focused, but you still get to gain some life. And I do like that. I think it's kind of fun. Uh, good, good, good. We needed that. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw this out there. Linden does such a good job with Daxos. Um, Interesting card. Okay. I'm kind of okay with that. I'm glad they blew up that rather than Daxos, uh, solely because we've got two more in hand. <clears throat> and a Banishing Light, so whatever they, they come up with, we, we do have a, a way to deal with it, hopefully. Go ahead and gain a life. Yeah, they can block it. Doesn't matter. We just want to gain it. Kill Linden. Yep. This is probably the like smokestack deck, which is a very problematic deck, but um hmm. Do I want a Linden? I think I kinda want to Linden here. Uh kinda funny that we've just had three back to back, but We'll see what they got. Uh, this deck is very, very brutal. The, the longer the game goes, the worse we are. Um, and I don't know for sure that that's this deck, but it definitely seems like it. they run a lot of little enchantments and things. So, What would we like? A land would be nice. Or like a pride mate would be fine, I think. This is an interesting addition. Uh, very, very strong in this deck, but normally don't see it. At least I have not, I should say. Treacherous Blessing, yep. Strong card for sure. What are they going to take? Probably Heliod. Or Banishing Light, I could see either one. Yep, okay, makes sense. Healer's Hawk. Not super exciting. Um, I think we do play it here, though. Just to go ahead and gain the life, and then we'll swing in. <coughs> a third land would put us in great... Sh or, excuse me, a fourth land would put us in great shape, because then we're at a Johnny and Archon level. Um, my guess is they may have another... Uh, Agonizing Remorse. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, that got it. Um, let's get Heliod out there. Yep. Very, very strong card. Nice little interaction there. Ah, very nice. And we do get our fourth land, that's nice. Uh Hmm. Let's play Archon. Bit of a greedy play. Uh if they I mean they've drawn a million cards, so there's a very high chance that they've got a way to deal with it. Okay. Take a Johnny, I would guess. Yep. <clears throat> We do not block here. We're going to take four, uh, but I think that's fine. Wow. Okay. Heavy, heavy on this. They get another treacherous blessing. Okay. They still got a ways to go until they get to a mill point, so we're not hoping for that. 
Now, though, anytime they play a spell, they're losing two life, which is interesting. I mean, we just do this, I think. And we pass. This is a really interesting deck we're up against. Very powerful. Uh, I've seen a lot of this Orizov enchantments, just not this uh, exact list for sure. I normally don't see final payment. Uh, haven't actually seen Cavalier of Dawn very often, though it makes quite a lot of sense in this deck, uh, as does final payment. Sure. I mean, we can Banishing like that, and I feel pretty good about doing it. Like, I think I'm okay with that. Uh, just highly depends on what they've got, obviously. So let's pull Banishing Light. I'm sure they've got ways to deal with this kind of thing. That's totally fine. Go ahead and give this lifelink. Uh, if they've got a removal spell, they're going to use it anyway. And that's all that we can do this turn, so I'm not worried about timing so much. Yeah. You got it. Walls up. So what do we want? Kind of just a big beater. <laughs> uh, any big spell... Yeah, because fair enough. They do have to be very careful about not playing spells. I mean, they're going to gain two life off of the birth of Miletus, so if they've got a way to sacrifice this, they're in fine shape. But, like, I guess that is a worry. Um, we'll go ahead and do this. That's all we can do. Obviously, different times can can be important there, but it's very clear that that's all we can do, so I'm just going to do it. We could have sandbagged that land, but I don't think we needed to. Okay, yeah, we'll just block here, that's fine. Save ourselves as much damage as possible. Gideon. Well, that's a card. Just because. <laughs> Uh, and we'll pass. Oh, it should have plus that. Duh. That was just a mistake. I always forget to on Gideon because he be turns into a creature. That was just a mistake. That's fine. He's going to go down pretty heavily here. But that's all saving us damage, so I'm fine with it. Get this out there. Let's give this lifelink. So they do have to block or have a something to do here. Um, looks like they do. That's fine. Go ahead and create a little token. So they will be able to take Gideon out this turn, uh, which sucks, but uh, with the counter on life's bounty, we should be able to block something, gain a life, and then put some, some counters on these guys. Yeah. Sacrifice the Treacherous Blessing, and then they're in good shape. So we really, really... Oh, no. Okay. We get the Golem. Interesting. I think we just pass here. We will sandbag this land. 
uh, worth it at some point to try. We're this game isn't going to go long enough that we're going to get two activations out of these castles. So, um, and we can activate castle plus life's bounty if need be. If they just Kaya's Wrath here, though, they gain so much life. It's ridiculous. Hmm. Yeah. Let that resolve. <laughs> yeah. I think <laughs> worth it. Mm. They're playing real close, but this is where we have a. Uh, this is a prime example of ha having a hard time of finishing the game. Uh, they've got all the removal. They've got all the ways to deal with what we've got. They're also gaining a little bit of life here with Elspeth. Like they've got the stuff that they need to do to finish out the game with Cavalier of Dawn with a big board presence, all that stuff. We are very far from dying, but that's going to go very, very quickly, uh, and that's our problem. Um, unfortunately, it's very difficult to to really do anything about that. They have 23 cards in their deck. I wonder what their attack step is going to look like. Do they just attack with everything? <clears throat> No, they don't. In which case, we're just going to do this. Say no blocks. <laughs> Not helpful. Um, we pass. Grindy game, but I definitely think we're in the, the losing seat here. Um, as close as they are to death, they've got Elspeth, they've got ways to gain life, like, they're, they're fine. Yep. And they've got a million cards in the graveyard, too. Yep. Nineteen cards left. Is there a worry of the day? Well, this is the Doom Foretold, so this is the smokestack, essentially. Uh, which is definitely not a fun place to, to be. Oops, cancel. Yep. <laughs> Drawing lands does not help. Um, yeah. I mean, this looks very, very bad. And at this point, it's just a slugfest, and that's what I kind of don't like about this, is when you get in these board stall positions where just nothing is happening. <laughs> Um, I also may have been wrong about the Arden Veils. Two more lands and we can activate both, which is kind of funny. Um, second Cavalier, yeah. Do this. Do this. We'll just go ahead and block like this. And we'll go ahead and spit out a creature. Um, don't need to block with everything, it doesn't matter that much.
they will win this game, I think. Uh, unless we can somehow... I mean, this is about to get sacrificed. There's very few draws in our deck that could really do anything against this. Um, in fact, I don't think there's any real draw. Um, we need a flyer, so like something that can get over these Cavaliers would be helpful. But my guess is they've drawn so many cards, they probably have a Kaya's Wrath. Um, I have to assume that they do at the very least. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to go ahead and concede here, guys. Uh, I just don't think there's a way we pull this out. So, uh, anyway, we did actually get two wins with this, though. Kind of surprising, considering the power level of this deck. Again, just don't think it's that high. Uh, still a very, very fun deck, though. If you haven't tried it out, I highly recommend at least giving it a shot so you understand how it plays. The deck list, again, is just below, so you can check that out uh, in the description. Definitely play around with some of those slots, like the Archon of Sun's Grace. Maybe you don't play that. Maybe you play more Ajani's. Things like that you can certainly play around with in this one. There's a little bit more wiggle room than there normally is in a lot of decks. Um, but still a very fun one. I think it's it's nice to gain a whole bunch of life. It just feels good. So uh, definitely check that out. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Please make sure again to check out our Patreon. The link is below. You can pick up a sticker this month. So uh, really exciting stuff. Uh, but other than that, uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next gameplay video.